Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential Series. This series demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In today's demonstration we will show you a simple technique for retrieving the previous value of an ADF business component attribute, which is a fairly common requirement. Retrieving the previous value of an ADF attribute is typically driven by one of two requirements either to show the old value of an attribute so it can be compared with the new, or implementing a business rule where there is a restriction on updating the attribute based on the old value. We'll look at both of these in the demonstration today, but we'll start with the requirement to show an old attribute first. The technique for showing an attribute's old value is to first create a transient attribute either in an entity or view object. In this presentation, I'll be using the entity object to do this, but you could in turn do it in the view object. From there, we create the entity input or view object input, depending on which entity object or view object we're creating the transient attribute in. And then we're going to override the transient attribute accessor for the new transient attribute that we just created. When we override that accessor, we're then going to call the get posted attribute method, which is the secret source in retrieving the old value of another attribute. Finally, I'll show an alternative groovy expression solution to make this all a little bit easier. Essentially, we don't have to drop the Java code. We can do this in a decorative-like fashion. The prerequisites for what we're going to show today is you have an existing ADF application workspace with a model project, with an entity object, a view object, and an application module. In the demonstration, I'll be using the employees table from the HR Oracle demo schema. So now in front of us, we have the JDeveloper IDE. You'll notice in the application navigator on the left hand side, we have the employees entity object, the employees view object, and this is exposed through an application module. On the right hand side, I have the employees entity object editor already open. We currently have the attributes node selected and you can see that I have the salary attribute selected as well. And my goal in the demonstration is to show you how to show the old value of the salary. So what we're going to do from here in order to show the old value of a salary is we're going to create a new transient attribute and we'll call it simply old salary. Once created, we need to make sure that the data types of the two fields is the same. So old salary must become big decimal. And this must be a transient attribute. I'll also reorder the fields, moving old salary up to salary so it's just a little clearer in the demonstration. Once we have the transient attribute, I'm then going to go to the Java node of the editor, select the edit button and generate the entity object class, effectively employees impl for this employees entity object. We also want the accessor option turned on here. We'll then navigate down to the employees impl class that was just created and search for the new method that was just created for us. And here you can now see the getter or the accessor for the old salary field. And you can see it returns a big decimal just like get salary does. Incorrectly what this does though is it currently attempts to retrieve a value for old salary from the internal ADF framework. We don't want to do that. We're going to override that method and instead we're going to return the following result. What the method get posted attribute does here is effectively retrieve the old value for salary before it's actually posted to the database in a commit. With that method now overridden, we also need to expose the transient attribute through our view object. And then finally, we can save this and run and look at the results in our Business Components Browser Tester. Once the Business Components Browser Tester opens, we open the Employees View object. We can see the salary of 24,000 
the old salary of 24,000 and watch what happens now when I change the salary to another value. Let's change it to 12,000. When I tab out of that field, you'll notice that the old salary remains with that value. And indeed, even if we navigate to a new record and then we return to the previous record, the old salary is maintaining the old value for salary, which was 24,000. Whereas the salary, or what we could call the new salary field, is maintaining the new value. Now closely watch here what happens when I press commit. You'll notice that the new salary remains what it is, but the old salary is now updated to the new salary value. The realization you need to make here is get posted attribute essentially shows you the old value up to the previous commits. Once you commit, it will be updated to the new value matching uh, the original attribute. Then quickly returning to our original instructions, we've now completed all the steps that we needed to do. However, what I'd like to do is show you an alternative technique to retrieving the old value using Groovy expressions. In returning to the JDeveloper IDE, you can see I've got the Employees Entity Object Editor open, and I already have the previous transient attribute old salary open as well. We don't want to use that anymore. We're going to create a new transient attribute called old salary2. We will make that a transient. In addition, we will make that a big decimal data type. The key difference for this guy over the previous transient attribute is we're not going to change the entity input code. Instead, we're going to come down here and create a groovy expression where we're going to call get posted attribute directly. The advantage of groovy expressions is we don't necessarily have to create the associated entity input classes or the employees input class and so on. We can just make calls to the effective superclass methods directly from our groovy expressions. So again, we call get posted attribute. And one subtle change you'll see here beyond the code that I wrote in the Java class is when I pass in the enumerated type of salary, I cannot just refer to it directly. I need to include the full package class name, that being model.employeesimple.salary. Once we've made that change, we go to the employees view object. We simply add that new attribute. And then we run the Business Components browser to see the result. As we can see now, we've got the original salary value, the original, original transient attribute, but also the new groovy expression transient attribute. When we change the original salary, you can see that the old salary and the old salary too remain at the old value. As we move backwards and forwards in our records, this still continues, but on a commit, we see that the old salary and old salary 2 are updated to the salary value at commit time. Let's move on to our second requirement. We have the need to create a business rule to ensure an employee's salary when increased is within 10% of the previous value. We can't have our employees getting too rich. While we could use the getPostedAttribute method as we just saw in an ADF declarative business rule, we'll discover that Groovy provides a simplest syntax in order to do this. Returning to the JDeveloper IDE with the Employees Entity Object Editor open, we're going to select this time the Business Rules node, and here we have the Salary Attribute open. On that Salary Attribute, I'm going to create a new declarative business rule and it's going to be a script expression, more commonly known as a groovy expression. Within the rules definitions tab, you can then enter a groovy expression in order to enforce a business rule. Now from here, you might think we would enter a call to get posted attribute like we saw earlier on, but this simply isn't necessary because the groovy expressions at the attribute validation level provide two implicit objects for us to use, and they are new value and old value that obviously return the current value and the old value as if we were calling get posted attributes. Once we've edited our group, entered our Groovy expression, we just need to add an error message. 
and then finally return to the Business Components browser to test. We then open the Employees View object. As you can see in here, we have a current salary of 500, so if we simply give the employee a $10 pay increase, no issues. But if we give them a substantial pay increase, bang, we can now see our error message. So in summary today, we can see that at the entity input or view object input level, we can make use of the get posted attribute method to return the previous value of an attribute for before the last commit. Alternatively, when using groovy level attribute business rules, we can also use the implicit old value and new value objects instead. To be clear, these implicit groovy objects are only available from attribute level validations. They are not available to entity level validations. Today's ADF Insider Essentials series demonstration is one among many resources available to you as an ADF developer on oracle.com forward slash technology forward slash jdev. There you will find more downloadable demos, tutorials, discussion forums, samples, and most importantly, the ADF developer guides. Thank you for watching this demonstration today, and I hope you'll join us again for another ADF Insider Essentials presentation soon.